It's Monday. It's February 13th. And the word of the day is quiddling, which means the act of keeping busy with trivial stuff as a way to avoid more important things. Used in a sentence, quiddling is a good word for Scrabble, depending on your dictionary and the board. But don't let it get in the way of your podcast listening. Mm-hmm. That's the important thing. See, and here I was thinking you were just announcing your resignation with a head cold, Heath. Yeah, so. I, I thought we were workshopping derogatory terms for people who keep buying uh, J.K. Rowling stuff despite knowing what a piece of shit she is. <laughs> I'm no illusions. <laughs> I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, Governor Sanders enters the State of the Union from the top row. (laughs) Marjorie Taylor Greene gets jealous of people with thought balloons and goes for a DYI. And the House Oversight Committee holds an Acme hearing that does not end well for them. But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, no illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, happy almost Valentine's Day. I'd just like to say that I love you both. And I much. love you, Heath. Aw, that's so nice of you. And I say- want you to know, now that I have the deadly COVID-19 virus, mm-hmm. please do not blame yourself, Heath, for all the times that you were mean to me. Okay. Or the I'm times you changed to, uh... the podcast of verse without my permission. I don't want you to beat yourself up for that. For though I may die of the deadly COVID-19 virus, which I have, very serious. I don't want you to have any guilt, either of you. Valentine's Day is my anniversary. Noah, I am dying. Okay. Okay. In our lead story tonight, (laughs) Joe Biden does not have COVID as far as we know, and he delivered the State of the Union address last week. And we learned that the state is, well, that word. Mm -hmm. We're a state, still technically a union. We have not devolved into a literal civil war. And as fun as that would be to win that and brag about being two-time civil war champs up here, it's probably a good thing that we don't do that. So Joe Biden was basically working with, here we are today in the state (laughs) of this union. And he did his best to give a rousing speech about, well, a holding pattern. Yeah. I'd say he did about as well as you can do with that being the scenario. Yeah. At a certain point, he should just do the husband's monologue from the end of Ordinary People and call it a day. But (laughs) (laughs) I just I just wish that he had the guts to open up with the state of the union is meh. Right? Like, the honesty would be a a, a refreshing change. Absolutely. So, the speech itself, given all that, I guess it wasn't bad. Uh, It was a speech, like, from start to finish. (laughs) It was a speech from start to finish. Biden addressed his goals for the economy and talked about continuing to push for a more progressive tax system, supporting unions, paying teachers better, capping prices on insulin, and, of course, addressing that thing with cops continuing to murder people, which is terrifying, but... For the next two years, it's just going to be Kevin McCarthy and House Republicans trying to crack down on fucking gender expression by candy mascots and watching Hunter Biden's porn history. And Joe Biden's just going to be wrestling giant dogs just waiting for a useful bill to come through, which probably won't. Yeah, which let me remind you, podcast listener, is so much fucking better than we had any hope to wish for. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I, it, it was so weird for me how many people said that the speech was boring without adding qualifiers like refreshingly. Exactly. Right? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Positives, neutral, neutralness. So bigger picture, Biden clearly wanted to establish that he's ready for another term. He's already 80, making him the oldest president in U.S. history. And he definitely came into the speech wanting to address all those, you know, obnoxious euphemisms for like old, but but yeah, you know, old, but yeah. And his writers were not subtle about it. Biden might as well have been doing like a little feat of strength between each paragraph. <laughs> being like Spry, right? Spry. It was a spry leg bend. Spry Joe. They call me Spry Joe sometimes. Anyway, now that I'm feeling a good deal of, of course, physical and mental vigor, which I always have normally because I'm spry. Let's talk about Medicare and Medicaid. And that was actually his big winning moment. He pointed out that certain Republicans are trying to defund Medicare and Medicaid. And that's a factual statement. Some of them are trying to do that for sure. And a factual statement was said. So, of course, a bunch of GOP liars started heckling from the audience because they're liars. That includes Marjorie Taylor Greene, who 
stopped murdering Dalmatians for a second, <laughs> got up and yelled boo, and showed off her insane Cruella jacket. Right. I don't know what the fuck she was thinking. <laughs> so in response to all that, Biden got in a little banter off script, spry banter, mm-hmm. super spry, and then tricked the Republican Party into backing away from cuts to those programs. After the heckling, Biden was like, oh, you're, you're not trying to cut those? Cool, cool, cool. So we all agree that cuts to those programs are off the table. I'm writing it down. And also we would all clap now to confirm that. And they all had to, to like slowly start clapping along with the Democrats because they got caught in a lie. By good old Nimble Joe, which just, is what we call him. But like, seriously, though, they literally fell for the State of the Union equivalent of Medicare supporter says what? <laughs> yep. They yeah. did. Exactly Wait, when that. you're getting slam dunked by a president who I'm pretty sure we could tie up by running around him in a circle with a rope. Not a great <laughs> sign for you. Yeah. Not a great sign. Yeah. Maypoles are dangerous for this guy, for <laughs> sure. So just to be clear, we shouldn't get too excited about not making cuts to vital programs that are already underfunded. But again, we're looking for small victories during a holding pattern as best we can. And of course, we're also looking for large failures by the bad team because that's what we do. And the GOP was happy to oblige. They sure were. The Republican response to the State of the (laughs) Union was handled by Arkansas governor and mortal enemy of subtlety in the universe, Sarah Huckabee. Sanders. We got the details from gimmebackmyfuckingcheeseplate.com, which covers Sarah wherever she goes. Very good journalism. Side note, that includes an absolutely insane ad recently tweeted by at GOP. It's a photo of Sarah Hux, and every single detail leads to more insane questions than the last. She's standing in a swamp. She's wearing camouflage hunting gear with a rifle bent over her shoulder, and there's a delightful dog feeling very uncomfortable about standing next Mm -hmm. to her. Yeah, yeah. The photo says, almost Friday at the bottom, and the tweet from at GOP says, get you a governor who can do both. So, what the fuck did any of that mean? I don't understand any of it. Both murder and not murder animal <laughs> what? Okay. I, but given the family track record with dogs i don't know if i'm gonna believe that second one until i see it <laughs> okay also what the fuck did almost friday mean I have no idea what is that it's daytime in the photo so thursday is that did they try for a synonym of thursday for some reason <laughs> and they they landed on almost they friday out on like tuesday i don't <laughs> no idea okay so dumb so let's talk about her speech for a minute Just for context, the world is still dealing with a pandemic. The fallout for the economy is just barely showing itself. Could be even worse. Cops are killing people again. We're barely taxing rich people. And our healthcare situation is an international joke. And Sarah Huckabee and the GOP decided to give a speech about the erosion of the white history curriculum and the woke fascism of the left. That's the big thing to focus on right now. The whole GOP strategy seems to be that, like, they know they can't win the real fight, so they have to stick to pretend ones. Yep. Right. Yeah. So apparently pointing out microaggressions is a macroaggression against ignorant people, and the GOP will not tolerate a direct attack like that. So here's a few highlights from Sarah Huckabee Sanders. I'll start with her nuanced commentary about feminism. That's important. She said, quote, I'm the first woman to lead Arkansas, and Joe Biden is the first man to surrender his presidency to a woke mob that can't even tell you what a woman is. And exact quote. Okay, to, to, to be clear, the actual argument here is these assholes with their fucking nuance. Yes, exactly. And I'm the mortal enemy of fucking nuance in the universe reminder. Just mm-hmm. not acceptable. Yeah. From there... We got the official GOP platform. I mean, they finally got one, so that, that's good, I, I guess. But it's a dystopian hellscape that they invented in their fucking gumption-addled minds, and then they built a platform to address their ridiculous fantasy. According to Sanders, quote, We are under attack in a left-wing culture war we didn't start and never wanted to fight. Every day, 
We're told we must partake in their rituals, salute their flags, and worship their false idols. So, sorry, I just got to stop right there. Are are they doing that? What are, are our idols? Like doing yeah. that? I hope they're doing that. Yeah. That makes me happy, actually. Continuing. All while big government colludes with big tech to strip away the most American thing there is. Your freedom of speech. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I remember saying the pledge of LGBT gents every morning at school <laughs> to the trans flag, just like it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah, but okay, so she says freedom of speech. She means spreading racist conspiracy theories on Twitter, but to be fair, spreading racist conspiracy theories on Twitter is the most American thing there is, more so than freedom of speech, certainly. <laughs> right. Yeah, she's got us there. Honestly, I thought, like, she said the most American thing there is. Big pause, and I was like, apple pie? Is she going to say apple pie? <laughs> <laughs> That would be better than what she went with. Mm. Anyway, that brings us to a very special inside scoop. Thanks to that microphone in a woke veggie plate disguised in camouflage to completely match Sarah's entire office, we have some exclusive behind-the-scenes audio. Let's roll that tape. I don't understand what's confusing about this. I want 56 Crunchwrap Supremes in an edible bag. Yes. What do you mean you don't have the... It's just a normal bag. Get me a bag. Yeah, no, fine. Call your manager. I want to speak uh, to so, your manager. Excuse me, Governor Sanders. Ty, Ty, nice. Yeah, yeah. Come on in, buddy. What up? Um, I was, uh, I was wondering if you wanted to go over your response to the State of the Union. Uh, we took some pretty major losses in the midterms. Up, up, up. So, there was an occasional whoopsie in the midterms. Occasional whoopsie, exactly. Thank and, you. And I just, I just wanted to know if you wanted any help. Oh, I get it. You want a sneak peek at my speech huh? Uh, no. All right, you uh, naughty boy. Here we go. But you just don't tell anyone, okay? I, I assure you, Governor, I try to forget this job the second I walk out the door each day. Nice. Anyway, going to start with, uh, what up, what up? It's your girl S-Dog here. And I think right that's a terrible radio DJ start. And then I'm going to be like, first up, Joe Biden can suck my labia majora. He can lock onto my flaps like a razor clam and never let go. You fucking got it? That's nauseating. I just, I don't. Two, woke people are bad. We're asleep. I love sleep. We all love sleep. I especially love it in my goo chamber. And then I'm going to be like, who's in it for the goo, right? So I, I don't, I don't think that's relatable. Jaira Lay. Jesus. First Lady Trump, when did, when did you get here? I was uh, standing here the whole time. I pretend to be a jail. Sh- okay, sure. Yeah, anyway, so yada, yada, yada. Veiled racism. Unveiled racism. A wink to Matt Gates being a pedo. And then I pile drive Diane Feinstein through the podium. Oh, no, Sarah, what did we say about wrestling moves? What? It, it's not like she's going to remember. Whatever. Oh, she got you there, Jyler. No, no wrestling moves. Fine, fine. All right, I'm starving. You guys want to get the bell? You want to get a little bell? I think I found one that forgot they banned me. And if you guys say the order into the drive-thru, they won't know it's us till we pull up. So, we're set. I, t- I mean, we have this veggie plate right here. Gross. In my country, sometimes a carrot is a finger. F- f- fine, we can go to Taco Bell. Jordan! Yes! Ooh! So, I'm sorry, did you say sometimes a carrot is a finger? You know, for a joke. I, I-, I do not know. You know. So there you have it, folks. And next up, we have some news about the Supreme Court. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Policy Genius. Hey, podcast listener, it's me, Eli Bosnick. You know, ever since I contracted the deadly COVID-19 virus, a lot of things have come into perspective. Who I care about, what really matters... The world is a snow globe, and I am watching okay. the snow fall. We, we both had COVID, and we did none of this. And should the big C, that's what I call it, the big C, take me away on the chariot of Mercury, I will rest in peace knowing that I have life insurance from Policy Genius. I don't, I can't imagine that they want that intro, dude. Actively not, I would assume. Heath, read the copy. I'm weak. Oh, you're done? Okay, yeah. yeah. So Policy Genius was built to modernize the life insurance industry. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $39 a month for $2 million of coverage. 
Some options offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Plus, Policy Genius has licensed agents who can help you find the best fit for your needs. And they work for you, not the insurance companies. That means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. And there are no added fees, and your personal details are private. Beautiful boys, I will miss hearing your sweet voices talk about Policy Genius. Okay, so your loved ones deserve a financial safety net, and you deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Just head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. Policy Genius. Eli's fine. For now. No, you're fine. Or am I? Yeah, well, yes, you are. And we're back. Next up in headlines in Clues News. The judicial wing of the face-eating lion party, a.k.a. the United States Supreme Court, is completely stumped <laughs> as to where that leak of how delicious your face is came from. <laughs> and in Pride and Prejudice News. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, phenomenal. Well done, sir. Yeah, but don't worry. Uh, they did a terrible job of checking, and they refused to check better in the future. Because in a farce that John Kennedy Toole would call a bit much, the Supreme Court concluded its investigation of the leak of the Dobbs decision with no answers and no solutions moving forward, because either of those things would mean admitting they are lions who eat faces. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I feel like the founding fathers would support 100% a lion eating the face of Brett Kavanaugh right now. Oh, oh for like, sure. I feel like they'd set up an event and charge admission if it was right. back in the day, for sure. Well, I'll tell you what, man. You, you couched that argument in enough originalism, and I think Neil Gorsuch will feed that man's face to a lion. I, I oh, don't... we can hope so. <laughs> yeah. That's a, it might be a viable strategy. We'll look into it. Yeah. So for those of you who missed it, uh, a bunch of assholes didn't vote for Hillary Clinton in 2016. Yada, yada, yada. The Supreme Court overturned the right to abortion. I, I know there's more to it than that, but no, there isn't. Go fuck yourself. Anyway, a couple months before the Supreme Court announced that women aren't people anymore, that decision was leaked. And I think we can all agree that that is the worst thing that happened to the Supreme Court lately. <laughs> Not the inclusion of the keg standing rapist and the Stepford wife with less legal experience than me being added to the court. Nope. It was the spoilers. The spoilers yep. were the problem. So they launched an investigation. Much in the same way that the, that the Vatican launched an investigation into all that child rape cover-up stuff. Exactly, yeah. And as I said, a couple weeks ago, they released the results of that investigation, and their results were, we don't know, but don't worry, we didn't ask anyone on the court or their spouses, which is pretty fucking insane considering one member of the Supreme Court famously leaked an abortion decision already, and one of their spouses also pretty famously committed treason during the attempted coup of the United States government. Yep, sure did. And uh, just a reminder about who you just were talking about, Ginny Thomas, she got caught in a very obvious lie by the J6 committee and eventually claimed she did a treason because it was an emotional week for her. Yep. She, she was sad and emotional because Donald Trump lost that week. Yep. So it's like, you know, when you're having a bad week and you buy a gallon of ice cream and you try to overturn American democracy as a whole. It was just it was one of those weeks. We've all been there. We've all been there. I usually go with a pint. <laughs> And let's be clear, most employees of the court signed affidavits, went through official investigative interviews, and in some cases had their cell phones confiscated. The justices, it appears, answered emails. That's wow. it. Just throwing a quick nah into reply all and they were good. Also, I don't know if anyone actually read the release, but it reads like Heath tempting Eli the document, right? It's just like, oh, yeah, no, what? it's hard to tell because everyone knows the codes to the doors of the Supreme Court. And if you don't know, people will just let you in no matter who you are. <laughs> hey, reporting around the official statement details that the conservative justices all eat lunch together in an unlocked and isolated room. Their words, not mine. I see what you're doing, Heath. Get out of the New York Times. Get out of the I New York Times, Heath. <laughs> I don't see what I'm doing. I tempt you with lunches, <laughs> mentioning he, he, lunches. Heath, don't ask questions that would be felonious for him to answer. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Eli, go Noah, ahead. Noah, thank you. And I know what you might be thinking. Eli, this is old news. Why are you talking about it now? Well, there's an amazing follow-up to this story that happened this week. So 
for so, so many reasons, this investigation being one of them, many are now pressuring the court to adopt a code of ethics about things that, up till this iteration of the Supreme Court, were understood, like recuse yourself from cases you might be biased in and no leaking Supreme Court decisions. Well, according to MSNBC, they've been working on that, and the sane justices cannot get the insane ones to agree to anything. They're like, Okay, guys, what about no raping? And Brett's like under his desk again. So there's the update. <laughs> okay, but big picture, the leak was true. Yeah. And, and the draft is exactly what we got in the final ruling for Dobbs. So the investigation was the conservatives being like fake mad that it, it fucked up their big reveal. <laughs> they, they were like evil, ta-da. And then they're like, fuck, okay. Fucking Mark Ruffalo talking about Endgame too early ruined our <laughs> party moment. This was no spoilers, the Supreme Court investigation, but also well, fake. Yeah, but so, but no, and I, and I think it's important to clarify this, right? Because the draft was leaked by conservatives so that the outrage about Roe being overturned had more time to subside before the election. Right. It, this was leaked for Republican political gain. It was one of the most blatantly partisan things ever done by a body that once voted along party lines to ignore the actual election results and just appoint their guy president. Yeah. Now, I guess what I'm saying after all of this is you should have voted for Hillary Clinton. Yeah. And if you didn't, whenever you hear news like this, you just need to be reminded of that. But don't worry. Only for the next 40 or so years or <laughs> until I have a really uh, it's all right. Then you're so, good. So well, what did I say well, about the felonies? Something beeped just now. I don't know what it was. That's fine. <laughs> and in balloonatic news, not just an apropos pun, but also a fantastic short by Buster Keaton. If you have 20 minutes to kill, not since the 1993 <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog Macy's Day Parade incident has America been more gripped by the popping of a balloon because on February 1st, <laughs> The Billings Gazette reported the civilian detection of a Chinese spy balloon drifting over the U.S., and for the next four days, half of America lost their goddamn minds in fear of technology from the 18-fucking-80s or something, <laughs> and the other half just carried on with their daily goddamn lives and enjoyed the meme fodder. This variable pandemonium ended on February 4th when the balloon crossed over the South Carolina border and was downed by a missile over U.S. territorial waters. Uh, the downing marked the first aircraft ever shot down by an F-22, as well as the first military aircraft downed into U.S. territory since World War II. Okay. I feel like the F-22 was maybe a little bit overkill. Yeah, right? I think. Pilot's like, hey, command, yeah, I'm, I'm up here. It's, it's just a guy in a top hat with an old-timey spyglass. <laughs> I don't know. Can we just, like, make him pull over instead of firing yeah. a missile? Now, when you see these pictures, it's, it's really hard to get a sense of how big this thing was. So to be clear, the balloon itself... 60 meters high. That's 200 feet. 20 fucking story building worth of balloon there. And and all the tech shit it's carrying beneath was the size of a small jet and weighed over 2,000 pounds. And that uh, 2,000 pound small jet's worth of shit, by the way, a lot of the reason why the early calls to just shoot it down were so fucking dumb, right? We don't have falling balloon capturing aircraft handy. We would be dropping that payload, not to mention a ton of balloon debris, all over some random patch of America. Odds are super high that there'd be something under it. Uh, of course, shooting it down over water also maximized the chances that we'd be able to cover the bulk of the equipment and figure out just what the fuck China was floating over us to begin with. Okay, in my head, the fighter pilot in the F-22 just kind of leaned out the window with a thumbtack yeah. to make this all happen. <laughs> Does anyone else feel like Tom Cruise offered to do this and then some buzzkill in the Air Force said no? Yeah, I feel like we have a sharp drone. Don't we have a sharp drone? I don't know. Uh, now, for their part, China insisted this was just an innocent weather balloon that had blown off course. Uh, but then the CIA was like, there's, there's actually a whole fucking fleet of them that have invaded the airspace of at least 40 countries and five different continents. And then China was like, super windy up there today. <laughs> We're very windy. And then the CIA pointed out they've actually been floating balloons like this over the U.S. and other countries consistently since at least 2017. And China was like, it's always actually super windy. Up, up there, <laughs> right. that high. And the CIA was like, just get better balloons is what we're saying. That's what we do. <laughs> just have a little respect for spying. This is fucking gauche what you're doing. China's like, yeah, sorry, guys. You lost an election to Facebook means we are no longer giving the U.S. our aid game. <laughs> <laughs> 
I guess that's fair. <laughs> right? No, yeah. Now, of course, the Chinese story is a ridiculous lie, and we're not meant to believe it, right? The balloon was four times the size of a weather balloon. It carried equipment to detect shit like cell phone activity on the ground, and it literally slowed down and lingered when it got over military installations and shit. Weather. Not typical. It's uh, really not windy up there sometimes. <laughs> right, right, yeah, it's like variably windy. No, it's just not wayward weather balloon behavior. But in keeping with their cover story, China is now characterizing the incident as the U.S. downing a civilian civilian aircraft and demanding that the debris be returned to China immediately. U.S. officials have responded by assuring China that they're trying to return the debris, but the aircraft they're shipping it in keeps accidentally getting diverted back into U.S. airspace. And, you know, I'm sure since that's such a believable thing to have happen to one's aircraft, China will be happy to accept that explanation. China, we're trying to send it back to you. But here's the thing. This guy, Herschel Walker, explained that you're sending us bad air and it's it's like super drafty in this one direction. So we can't do it. I just one other thing about China being super half assed with this in their like propaganda about the balloon. They didn't bother to get real news anchors. They just used fake AI anchors oh, like no. someone in the office was like, no, guys, we, we got the mid journey um, beta. Can we do that? And they were like, yeah, it's just America. <laughs> fucking, fuck it. We, basically, a cartoon sexy fox was like, oh, they downed a civilian aircraft. <laughs> no, as I intimated at the beginning. None of this really matters, right? China has satellites floating over top of us all the fucking time. And everybody, Eli's age and younger, has voluntarily downloaded a Chinese spy satellite onto their goddamn <laughs> phone. Okay, you tell me where on the internet I can find sexy dances besides TikTok, Noah. What? Literally everywhere the, on the, the internet. What are you talking internet, about? Yeah. No. But for. <laughs> I'm looking at one right now. It was Google. But the real reason this is a story, though, is because Republicans have been trying to use it as ammunition against Joe Biden, right? Implying that America's safety has been compromised because his administration is soft on balloons. Republican Representative Pete Sessions said that the American people were, quote, horrified that we have a president who would allow Chinese spyware to sit on top of our country for days at a time and seemingly do nothing. Uh, and, and Senator Josh Hawley called it, quote, just another display of incompetence and weakness by Joe Biden, end quote. OK, but Trump, on the other hand, was addressing the imbalance of spy balloon trade <laughs> oh, for us. We'll, we'll get really? there. We're going to get there. So is this dealing with the balloon gap? Yeah. No, but but before we get there, I have to talk about the stupidest reaction, of course, which came from none other than Marjorie Taylor Greene. She spent the whole fucking day leading up to the State of the Union address carrying a big goddamn balloon around in an effort to make someone <laughs> other than her look stupid. She looked so silly, like like a child just being like, I also have a comically oversized lollipop and this super villain jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sitting member of Congress. Congress. In the great state okay. of Georgia. Guys, guys, I know I've said this before, but if we considered just a national liberal movement of don't drink bleach, because <laughs> I feel like we could have the majority back like in an afternoon yeah. if Biden said it publicly. Yeah, no, I think you might be right. Now, of course, all the cries that Biden invited this with his lax balloon policy were severely undercut when the Pentagon admitted that they'd been detecting the odd Chinese spy balloon floating over the country since at least 2017. Uh, this led to a lot of Republican detractors issuing statements along the lines of, OK, but still, though, and Trump called reports of similar incursions during his presidency, quote, fake disinformation, end quote, <laughs> which, which actually looped back around to be yeah, accurate into characterization. Yeah. Uh, Misunderestimate. <laughs> <laughs> it remains to be seen, of course, if he'll incorporate this into his 2024 campaign with a build the dome chant. Uh, but it honestly it wouldn't surprise any of us at this point. <laughs> And speaking of people who really need some help, let's pause for a quick word from BetterHelp. Hey, podcast listener. That's right. It's me, Eli Bosnick, still here with the deadly COVID-19 virus. Seriously? Two ads in a row? You know, I've been thinking lately okay. about this short life I've lived, about whether I was my best self, as it were. And I think we can all agree, now that I wane towards Jupiter's basket, that I was... The best humanity has to offer. Jupiter's, you have a weird sense of mythology, dude. But not everyone is as perfect as me. Perhaps you have the chalky forehead of my dear boy Heath, or the thinning eyebrows what? of no illusions. What? But working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you. 
Because when you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything that life throws at you. Neither of those things are going to be fixed by working with a therapist. Hey, also, my eyebrows are not thinning. Are they? Are they? Are my eyebrows? They're pretty good. So if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Much as I am switching from this plane to the next, like the feathers of Aphrodite's arrow. Nope. No, neither of those either. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Skeptocrat. BetterHelp. Like Agamemnon's hammer, but for your brain. I'm actively hoping you die now, honestly. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back. Next up in headlines, the House Oversight Committee was taken over by Republicans last month, and they immediately got to work on the important issues that matter most to the lives of the American people. And number one on that list is, of course... The big tech conspiracy to make sure you never heard about the porn on Hunter Biden's laptop. The GOP held a hearing to investigate, and despite being in charge of the whole thing and getting to pick all the star witnesses they wanted and control every moment, it went so very badly for them because they're idiots. Okay, people. They held a Bigfoot hunting party populated entirely by Bigfoot enthusiasts and still didn't find Bigfoot. They were foiled by the nature of a hearing itself. Well, but on top of that, you have to combine that with like the fact that it also was filled with boomers trying to figure out how to change the alerts on their phones type shit, right? (laughs) So just to catch everyone up who was blocked by the shroud of secrecy on the information superhighway when this came out in 2020. Hunter Biden is Joe Biden's son, and he owns a laptop. Uh, you don't even want to know the cloak and dagger shit I had to go through to find that out. Like, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you, technically. Anyway, according to Rudy Giuliani and the New York Post. Oh, those are so- <laughs> uh, Yeah, <laughs> some great sources. Great way to start a sentence. According to that, Hunter Biden had a laptop full of emails to, like, Russian Illuminati people, and then he spilled some coffee on that laptop, so he gave it to a blind Republican computer guy in Delaware, and he was like, fix the coffee spill, and, oh, yeah, also wipe off all the crack cocaine that I sprinkled on it because I do crack cocaine all the time. (laughs) I'm Hunter Biden, and I do that. But do not go into the folder marked... My dad, Joe Biden, is definitely a spy. That's about a personal (laughs) thing. Just ignore that. And, of course, woke liberal operatives like billionaire libertarian Jack Dorsey, then CEO of Twitter, wanted to get higher taxes for himself and other wealthy people from Joe Biden. So so Jack Dorsey wanted to hide that story, which was already published in the number six most circulated paper in the United States. So that's that's the narrative. So the committee was investigating Twitter for their nefarious role in blocking links to that story on their platform for a day. They did that, I think. Right. And let's be clear. The part that was being blocked is still not true. Yep. Right. Hunter Biden did not leave his laptop in a strip mall in Delaware who and was only recognized by smell. That's why the story <laughs> got taken down. Not because of the contents. Because of uh, the lie. Right. No, yeah, the name of the hearing could have been, well, just how damn good do we have to make our disinformation before you will share it then? <laughs> so the GOP narrative is based on something called the Twitter files, which were internal company documents that they allege was about the Biden campaign conspiring with Twitter to kill that story that, again, had already happened. But since then, the story in the Post has been thoroughly debunked as not at all showing that Joe Biden was a spy or whatever. And the Twitter files have been thoroughly debunked as not showing a conspiracy. And the person who combed through the Twitter files after being hand-selected by Elon Musk was journalist come dude bro blogger Matt Taibbi, who went through thousands of documents, and he said, there's no evidence of any government involvement in the laptop story. 
And we got the exact same response from everyone in the hearing last week. The GOP called up star witness after star witness, and every single one was like, no, though, there there wasn't a government, <laughs> government cover-up at all. Why would you ask me to come here? You're super dumb. No, what? That includes top members of Twitter's legal team and the heads of several Twitter departments at the time testifying for Congress under oath. All right, uh, stop, 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 guys. Can we do this again, but without the oath stuff? Maybe some big weeks <laughs> before people start talking. This is not going how we wanted it to. Ah, oh, so okay. So imagine if Mom sold the Santa Claus lie so well that she accidentally convinced Dad that Santa was real, and he didn't buy any Christmas presents, so there was nothing <laughs> under the tree. That's the Republicans of the hundred and eighteenth <laughs> Congress. It's a perfect description. And here's my favorite part of their backfire hearing by Acme. The only big revelation from the entire thing was that Twitter actually was in contact with members of a government administration, but it was the Trump administration and it was at a different time. And Twitter may have actually relaxed their hate speech rules in order to avoid banning Trump for a while. That's what we actually learned. A former senior member of Twitter's content moderation team, who again was chosen by the GOP to be in the hearing. She testified that Twitter ended its ban on the phrase, go back to the country you came from and similar things. And that allowed Trump's account to continue existing after he said almost those exact words in reference to Ilan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, AOC, and Ayanna Presley. And just, you know, not that it matters, but just for the record, Tlaib is from Detroit, AOC is from New York, and Presley is from Cincinnati. Ilan Omar is the only one who immigrated here, not that it matters again. He was just commenting on immigrant status based on, like, arm color yeah. gesture, and that's yeah. it. But, yeah, to, to be clear on the, the order of things here, the premise is this is such an immoral act that proving Joe Biden did it would be quite the scandal. The hearing shows that he didn't do it. The hearing shows that Trump did. And the conclusion is, yeah, but it's not like it's immoral. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have backfired more. So stupid. So, bottom line. The GOP was in charge of a court. They made a kangaroo court and they got to run the whole show down to every detail. But then all the kangaroos just very eloquently explained that the only pressure from the government on Twitter (laughs) came from Donald Trump. You guys are dumb. Why would you invite me, a very intelligent kangaroo, to this to contradict you? And then committee chair James Comer from the GOP, of course, was like, fuck Ted. Can we cut? Time out. Time out. Interference. Yeah. Someone was in my this account. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and can we just like, can we specifically point out how awesome both AOC and Jamie Raskin were in that hearing? It was so fucking Beautiful. good. So good. Yeah. And in amending the Santa Claus news, we here at Puzzle and a Thunderstorm have a new contender for official mascot. And her case is strong. As a police department in Rhode Island shared a request they got from a little girl in their town this week. Asking they run a DNA test from the cookies she left out for Christmas for proof of Santa. That's adorable. (laughs) Santa gets home to Mrs. Claus. She's like, how was your day? He's like, oh, how was my day? Not great. Not great. You were not going to believe what I had to do with a plastic cup down at this police station in Rhode Island. It was fucking crazy. I had a crazy day. I Also, I don't like the use of the phrase mascot here, but I'll allow it. I'll allow it for the purposes of this. (laughs) Yeah, so the note, which has such adorably bad handwriting, it looks like a prop from a movie, says, Mm -hmm. quote, Dear Cumberland Police Department, I took a sample of a cookie and carrots that I left for Santa and the reindeer on Christmas Eve and was wondering if you could take a sample of DNA and see if Santa is real, end quote. And I am pleased to say that the police got on it and have announced that Santa is a black guy they already arrested. It's very confusing. (laughs) (laughs) At the station, but that's their story and they're sticking to it. Now, either way, adorableness aside, hey, parents of this little girl, if your kid is at the I want DNA evidence phase of Santa Believe, it's it's time to go ahead and break the truth to him. I think it, honestly, I think it's a little past time. Yeah, maybe. And hey, if you don't, don't sweat it because all you're doing is guaranteeing us a future listener. Get them while they're young and all that. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And finally tonight, in Dance Dance Retribution news, according to fully one third of the employees at Project Veritas, founder James O'Keefe is somehow even more of an asshole than you thought he was. 
Of course, you'll remember James O'Keefe and his project Veritas as the right-wing video sting operation that tries to trick people on the left into saying incriminating shit into hidden cameras, fails, then deceptively edits those videos to make it look like they succeeded. Uh, also, other dumb shit, but mostly that. So anyway, that guy, a guy whose employees intentionally went to work for a company known for lying charities out of existence is such an insufferable piece of shit that those employees demanded that he be placed in a leave of absence and that his leadership role in the organization be reevaluated. Yeah, he basically got fired from the homeopathy company for watering down the product. It's <laughs> terrifying right. to think about this scale-wise. So what we know about this comes from uh, a couple press releases by Project Veritas and an internal memo obtained by the Daily Beast. The press releases, not super useful, right? Just a bunch of... No, your bullshit news organization is crumbling under the weight of an egomaniac's insatiable desire for aggrandizement. That's what you are. Uh, but the details we get from the memo are fucking amazing. It, it was basically a long series of complaints about abusive behavior that was signed by, again, more than a third of the staff. And it accused O'Keefe of publicly humiliating employees. It, it called him a power drunk tyrant. It implied that he had spit on employees that angered him. And in one of the most stunning anecdotes of despotic pettiness from a boss that I have ever encountered, one complainant says, quote, I was yelled at in front of jurors because O'Keefe was hungry and and then he took the eight month pregnant woman's sandwich. End the quote. What the fuck is happening? I don't, I don't know. Now, the memo doesn't say that she had the sandwich like in her hands most of the way to her mouth at the time, but that is definitely how I'm going to picture it until someone can prove otherwise. That is canon. That is what happened. He, <laughs> then he just pulls away a newborn from a different woman. Will you um, lighten up this coffee real quick? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well, I'll, I'm going to give the kid back in a second. I'm just, okay, but see, now I'm very conflicted because on the one hand, this is obviously terrible behavior. On the other hand, the only people who deserve to be treated this way are the ones who agree to work for Project Veritas. Yeah, so, I did. you know. No, I'm fair, fair. It's a moral dilemma. It's tough. Um, and while a third trimester de-sandwiching is probably the most shocking revelation in the memo, it was not the weirdest. I would give that honor to all the revelations about how much money Project Veritas is spending to promote O'Keefe's musical theater ambitions. Yup. Their words. Again, quoting from the memo, quote, all the theater stuff and how it's handled makes me very uneasy. In the end, we are in a deficit now. Our fans and potential fans beyond do not respond positively to all of that stuff. End quote. So what theater stuff is he referring to? Well, he could be referring to the way that O'Keefe's book launch was preceded by a bizarre 50-minute musical theater production that told O'Keefe's story in a mix of song and dance with a bunch of fucking strobe lights and sequins. Uh, but he's more likely referring to stuff like the $20,500 in excess benefits that were granted to O'Keefe so that he could pay for staff to accompany him to Virginia and watch him star in a community theater production of Oklahoma. God, you could not write it. You could not write it. If this whole story, Noah, is a veiled dig at hats off to Botswana, <laughs> well, I feel like it is. I feel like that is what's happening. I will reiterate, I've said this many times, it's a legitimate business expense to lean into a throwaway line from five years ago by producing a very, yes, problematic, lavish musical. That is core podcasting <laughs> business. Thank Noah. you, Heath. Yes. You know what? Noah's just mad because he lost the part of Welby to Chris Kattan. And well, you can't tap doing... dance either. I'm just saying you clear. can't <laughs> tap dance either. Um, I should also point out that this abuse wasn't reserved strictly for employees. Uh, the, the memo also talks about him browbeating donors into giving the organization ever larger checks, often in the five and six figure range. According to one of the stories, some woman he's trying to like strong arm into a $75,000 donation asks if she could get a picture with him. Not only does he turn her down, but he does so in a way so dismissive and callous that it literally left her in tears. Uh, patrons, for the record, you could take a picture inside of me for a lot less than $75,000. <laughs> like a lot, a lot less. Now, it's important to keep in mind that in spite of its laughably inept track record, Project Veritas is an astonishingly well-funded organization. Their operating budget is on the order of $20 million a year. 
officially they bill themselves as a news agency, even though pretty much everything they've ever said outside of that memo is a demonstrable lie. But the entire operation is dependent on O'Keefe's embarrassingly inept, but nonetheless incredibly visible public shenanigans. So... As if finding out that people who voluntarily went to work for a company dedicated to using lies to shut down reproductive care facilities were getting spit on and publicly humiliated wasn't good enough news for you, the company may also be disintegrating right before our eyes, too. Okay, well, that's good. I like the disintegrating part. Yeah, Yeah. right? Excellent. All right. On that note, we found a good one. We're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us on Facebook, followed us on Twitter, and sent us feedback on the other various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening, and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, please feel free to send us gifts of money at our donation page at patreon.com slash skepticrat. Just like all the new generous donors who will be complimented next time around. Also, I'm going to compliment somebody specifically right now. Big thanks to BFF April Poff for all the wonderful, She's wonderful awesome. support. Let's get an ooh ooh. Can we get an ooh ooh? Ooh ooh. Eli's, Eli's got a cold. He tried his best. Ooh ooh. I have COVID. Okay. Have My voice deadly. just doesn't do that. I was a smoker COVID for COVID nineteen <laughs> virus. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D and D Minus, and Citation Needed. Available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Drafts on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. That was my idea for political cartoon this week. We just you just show a bunch of Congress people walking in, and then you have their thought balloons, and they're thinking about policy wonk type shit. And you just show Marjorie Taylor Greene walking around with her big white balloon right like in the line. <laughs> that would be pretty solid. That's excellent, right? <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.